I'm going to call the Committee on Government Operations to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Each member is acknowledging that they are attending the meeting via Zoom and that they are located in Wayne County, Michigan, unless otherwise stated when I call your name. Commissioner Knizek, he's actually logging in right now. Okay. Commissioner Clark Coleman. Here. Commissioner Basham. Commissioner Basham. Here. Here. Commissioner Colleen. Right here. Chair Dobb. Here. You have a quorum present. Thank you. And has Commissioner Knizek joined us now? I have. I have. Great. Thank you for asking. <laughs> okay. Thank you, um, Madam Clerk. Next item. B, Chairwoman's remarks. I have none. Next item. C, approval of the May 26, 2021 meeting minutes. Move approval. Support. Support. It has been moved and supported. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next item, please. D, unfinished business. There is none listed. Next, next item. Moving to the agenda item first. Under new business, item four, requesting commission approval of the appointment of Mario Morrow to the Wayne County Zoological Authority Board of Directors. Move approval. Support. Support. Have a motion for approval by Commissioner Clark Coleman and I think support by Commissioner Colleen. Madam uh, Chair. Yes. Hi, Andrew Kandrievis from uh, Wayne County Executive Warren Evans office. And just wanted to point out that Mr. Morrow is available. He's here today. Um, and uh, I think you'd like to say hello if anybody would like to ask him any questions, but he is uh, the, um, um, the person that we're putting forward for the Zoological Authority Board um, that is uh, currently an open seat right now. Thank you. Mr. Morrow, would you like to briefly introduce yourself and um, if you have any comments? Thank you, I uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity to say a few words. Uh, as a lifelong Detroiter and a resident of Wayne County, an active zoo visitor and benefactor, um, I look at this honor and look at this position as an honor um, and a privilege. Um, if appointed and approved by the, the board, the commission, I will serve in uh, with uh, great integrity. I look forward to uh, any questions that you might have. Do we have any questions from commissioners? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, will you please take the roll call? Oh. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? Yes. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passes. Um, congratulations on your uh, approval in committee, and we will um, move that to full board for for your uh, approval at full board. Congratulations you. to you, Thank you Mario. Very much. Mario and I go way back. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna tell my age now. <laughs> way back. <laughs> Let me reconsider my. Uh... <laughs> no, oh, no Come on, commissioner. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you joining us. <laughs> You're welcome to stay, but I, I know you have um, another commitment. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Item one, communication from Deputy Corporation Counsel forwarding the Department of Corporation Counsel settlement report for April 2021. Ms. Jordan. Hi. Hi, Deputy Corporation Counsel Cheryl Jordan. Um, the settlement report for April 2021 reflects that there were no settlements this month or that month. Okay. Hmm. Can I get a motion to receive and file? So move. Yeah, I'll support Commissioner Basham's motion. <laughs> it has 
been moved and supported. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any extensions? Motion passes. Next item. Item two, requesting commission approval of retroactive amendment one to a two-year contract with Plunkett Cooney. All right. Is there anyone from the administration who can speak to this item? I'm Madam Chair, it's Paul O'Neill, uh, Principal Counsel in the Corporation Counsel's Litigation Division. And uh, I'm representing the Corporate Co Corporation Counsel's Office. We also have uh, Ms. McGifford here from Punga Cooney who can help to answer any questions on, on their end. Okay. Um, my first question is, um, so we're adding funds to this, um, to this contract, have we have we spent all of the funds that were originally um, on the, on the first contract? My, or my, have we overspent, rather? Yeah, my understanding is it's there's uh, twelve. There was a response from my our office to the fiscal department. I'm pulling that up. I think there was four thousand or so. That is invoice of work that's been invoiced that ha that hasn't been that exceeds the thirty five thousand right now. Okay, and that's the reason for the retroactivity. Yeah, I believe so. All right. Um, any other any questions from commissioners, uh, Commissioner Basham? Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, I I noticed it is a retroactive contract, and what's the reason for the retroactivity? Um. Commissioner, the, when we first received the lawsuit, um, we, there was a, a flurry of, of activity where at the beginning of the case because uh, the plaintiff's counsel had requested that uh, of the Wayne Circuit Court that this matter be a class action. And because of a similar matter that we have with the exact same um, counsel who represent, who's representing the plaintiffs in, in, in this case, the Hogan case, uh, we have that, that case that's going on in our office that we appealed to the Sixth Circuit on. So we have, a, you know, corresponding federal cases in this, and it required significant motion practice right at the front end uh, when the case was filed. Well, if I may, Madam Chair, we have a we have a, a method. If if if, uh, if time is an issue, they can get extra approval on some of this stuff. Uh, and and my thing since day one over 10 years is to try to reduce retroactivity if at all possible. And um, so I don't personally see a reason why, um, because this stuff happens all the time with, with uh, council. Um, I don't understand why it has to be retroactive. And to, you know, I, I just don't think that is a good enough answer for retroactivity. Uh, and especially when there's methods that we can do to move, move an item forward. Is there I'm done. the administration side who would like to respond to that? Um, this, uh, especially with regard to um, legal billing. Madam Chair, Andrew Candrevis here. Um, I, there's, I don't know if anyone is going to be able to answer any questions about legal billing. Corporations councils, uh, this is their contract and they're speaking to it. If you need a larger discussion on legal billing. Um, I'm glad to discuss it with uh, COO Janelle Allen or, or other folks or, or the, you know, the director of the department, but um, well, what is it exactly that you'd like me to address? I'm just wondering if there is, um, if there's an issue or a process that we might need to look at with timing of um, getting invoiced from outside legal firms coming to the county and causing this retroactivity when we need to add more funds to the contract. Um, Chairwoman, this is Cheryl Jordan. I'll, I'll speak to this just a little bit, um, if I may. Um, this used to happen a lot more than it does now. And, and as far as I know, used to be a pretty big issue. 
uh, where we would either run out of funds or run out of time. And yet the, the case was still going. And so of course we can't tell our, our council to stop representing us um, in the interim. What we've done in, in the meantime, and this was uh, a result of the Office of Auditor General's um, recommendations a couple of years ago is we've instituted a, a invoicing software called Legal Tracker and our, our, um, our contract manager within Corporation Council has done a wonderful job um, staying on top of our, our outside law firms making sure that this type of situation doesn't happen. And so um, every once in a while it, it happens. Um, but I, wanna, I, I would like to say that uh, it's significantly been reduced and that um, you know, everyone within Corporation Council and our outside council, they're uh, informed, you, know, you, can't get pay, you can't get paid until the, the amendment is, is approved. So while there are outstanding invoices, those will not be paid until the commission approves the amendment. All right, great. It's, um, I'm glad that you, I didn't know about the, uh, the legal tracker software, so it, it does sound like that issue was addressed a few years ago. Um, Commissioner Basham. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, like uh, Council uh, uh, Jordan said, uh, it used to be a big issue. And, and uh, so I think uh, some folks on the commission have been, uh, showed their due diligence of trying to continually raise the facts. So I expect this to pass, but uh, just to continue to be my consistent self, um, I will be a no vote on this issue. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Any other commissioners have any um, questions or discussion on this item? Okay, hearing none, um, Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. Lee, we need a motion. Oh, did we not have a motion? I move it. Irma Clark Coleman, I move it. Elaine supports. It has been moved by Commissioner Clark Coleman, supported by Commissioner Colleen. And now, Madam Clerk, we'll call the vote, please. Commissioner Knizek? Yes. Commissioner Clark Coleman? Yes. Commissioner Basham? No. Commissioner Colleen? Aye. Chair Dobb? Yes. Motion passed. Next item, please. Thank you, commissioners. Yep. Item three, a discussion on emergency procurements. All right. Um, I just want to start out this discussion with um, a summary of some of the discussions that we've had with um, commission council and the procurement department, as well as our COO. And then we will open it up to any questions uh, from commissioners. So um, yesterday in preparation for this meeting, I invited our commission staff, uh, commission council, and some members of the administration to meet with uh, Vice Chair Commissioner Colleen and myself to discuss the way that these emergency procurement ordinance um, items have been executed throughout the past year, throughout the pandemic. Commission Council has had several concerns with how the agreements and contracts have been executed utilizing the emergency procurement ordinance. Contracts have been missing signatures, uh, required documents such as the ethics and insurance forms have not been submitted, um, contracts without Contracts have been submitted without any terms specified. Our commission fiscal staff staff has also noticed noted that some of the contracts have expenditures or revenues that did not match total submitted through the procurement software. Our procurement director, Aaron Wagner, acknowledged some issues early on in the pandemic you know, dealing with all of the, the issues that, that came with the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, transitioning to working remotely, and the increase in the need of emergency procurement contracts due to the emergency health orders. His department has held PCM trainings with the contract managers on how to properly utilize the emergency procurement ordinance. Our COO, Janelle Allen, has committed to enforcing the proper procedures 
for the emergency procurement ordinance and to send any items that do not meet the required criteria back to the contract managers before the item or the service is procured. Additionally, procurement is planning to devise and implement a system that will deny contracts to be approved in the procurement workflow. If any, if any contracts are missing a signature or a required document, the software will deny that a continuation of procurement until it is it meets the basic requirement. So that's kind of a summary of, of what we've been working on behind the scenes um, with commission staff, commission council, and the administration, uh, procurement department, um, and our COO. So uh, with that, I'm going to open it up to um, questions from commissioners to um, ask of our procurement director, our COO, um, commission council, and do we have any questions? Or discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, yes, if I may, um, you did outline what we discussed the other day. Uh, and I just want to give uh, administration the opportunity to say, yep, that's an accurate summary or no, it wasn't quite an accurate summary for whatever reason. Uh, still in the spirit of we're walking together on this to get this fixed. So just so that we don't have it, nothing was said there that administration go, well, wait a minute, I don't think we necessarily agreed to that. So I, I'd like them to have an opportunity to uh, respond to your summary. Yes. Good afternoon. This is Janelle Allen, Chief Operating Officer with Morrissey Evans Office. Um, I believe, yes, uh, Commissioner, the Chair Dobb did accurately reflect what I had conveyed, which is that our expectation is that all departments will fully comply with the emergency procurement ordinance, as well as the internal procurement policy for emergency procurement. So you did accurately reflect that. And I'll let uh, Aaron respond to with regard to system changes, but we have agreed that internally for accountability that these emergency procurements must go through the procurement division. So if something is not fully compliant, it will be returned to the originator to make any corrections needed before it will be fully processed. Through the chair, this is Aaron Wagner, the procurement director. Um, it, as, as you had stated in the summary, um, you know, we are looking to put in more stringent controls within the system um, to make sure that those, uh, those packages are accurate as, as, as well as uh, reviewing with commission staff our policies and, and procedures um, as to what items will be submitted and, and uh, ensuring that the policy matches with the procurement ordinance uh, as it relates to the emergency procurements. Thank you. Uh, does Corporation Council have any comments? No, I think, um, I think everyone summed it up accurately. And, you know, we just, we look forward to having uh, open communication. If, if an issue arises, please, you know, feel free to reach out to us so we can address it right away. Um, I mentioned yesterday in the call that, you know, the, the emergency procurement ordinance is been used a lot during the pandemic and that we're really hoping to see that wind down um, as we all hope that the pandemic goes away as well. And so, you know, it was, it was sort of a learning curve um, for, for everyone when, when this was happening. So I'm um, just happy to um, work together to, to make sure that uh, everything goes correctly. Thank you. And um, do we have any uh, comments from um, Commission Council? Is there anything you'd like to add? She's on here. Keisha, are you on? Oh, I'm sorry. You broke up. I didn't hear the, all oh. of your statement. Um, through the chair, good afternoon, everyone. 
No, Madam Chair, you summarized the conversation and some of the concerns. Um, as indicated, the administration was committed to addressing some of those outstanding issues that staff has raised with regards to these items. Um, so at this time, I, I have no additional comment. Okay, great, thank you. And then um, finally, last but not least, um, commission staff, uh, our clerk or fiscal staff, do you have any um, comments that you'd like to add to the summary? Good afternoon, this is Pamela through the chair. No, everyone summarized everything nicely. We just look forward to working with the administration to get some more firmer practices in place as it relates to emergency procurements. Same here, Madam Chair, for fiscal staff. Okay, well, um, hopefully, you know, I, I, I do think it was a very productive discussion and we can all work together to, um, you know, make sure that these, these items going through the emergency procurement ordinance uh, go through properly and are submitted completely. And I'm um, just gonna put out one last call for any questions or comments from commissioners. And so hearing none, that will complete our discussion on the emergency procurement. Madam Chair, if I may, I just wanna thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for giving attention to this issue and pulling people together. Uh, uh, there's enough issues out there without just having these kinds of whatever, misunderstandings or whatever. Uh, and the more we can clear that up, the better we can run county government here in Wayne. So thank you for your attention to this. Definitely, thank you. Right, um, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Yes. Such other matters as may be properly submitted before the committee. I have none. Uh, so next item. Public comments. All right, please unmute all of the lines. If anyone has a um, comment they'd like to address the Committee on Government Operations, you may do so at this time, a few minutes. Does anyone have any public comments they'd like to state at this time? Last call for public comments. Madam Clerk, we receive any emails? No, we have not received any emails. Okay. Hearing no public comments, we'll move on to the next item. Adjournment. So moved. Support. And moved and supported. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. You too. Thank you, Madam Chair.